it's the next morning. I got the manifold off this one and that one. Got the turbos laid side by side. I was it's a little bit of length difference. This one's a wastegated turbo, which I would rather have the non-wastegated turbo on there than that piece of shit there. So, I mean, so it's going to be, this one's about one inch exactly shorter. This uh, impeller housing is a little bit different looking, isn't it? Hmm. It's a little bit different looking on the impeller side of it. I think the OD is still the same. I had a tape measure here. Just a little bit about four and a sixteenth. Right at four. Just a little bit. I mean, that's perfectly right at four. This one's just a little bit over I guess I ought to make sure that hose that, that hose ought to go over that I wouldn't think that'd be a problem um, if I have to I think that's setting in flex tube so I mean I should be able to cheat a little bit and move that ahead if I can't get it to move enough with the flex I should be able to loosen that clamp move that ahead just enough to get that on here I think so, um, got this manifold cleaned up. Who knows if it's straight. It'd probably be a good idea to have it planed, but I don't have time. Uh, I got new bolts, and I want to, and I got new gaskets right here. All new bolts. But I am going to anti-seize every single one. Oh, that's what I wanted to do now that I can get my thought process together here so obviously the turbo pressure line is going to have to be changed as well because that one's longer because the turbo sits back further that turbo sits way back here on this one where that turbo set right here on this one so we'll throw this oh what's what's in there what is that Laid my Leatherman down somewhere. What is that? Is that a dead fly? Is that what that is? A dead bug or something in the damn... Let's get a pair of needle nose pliers or something and can get it out of there. It's a foreign material in the pressure line for the turbo is not a good thing. A little pair of needle nose pliers and that's a dead fly. Huh. Okay, that's interesting. How did that little bastard get back up in the pressure line in there, huh? Okay. Okay. Um I think it's about time. Yep. Hold on, guys. It's 8 o'clock. I can start making phone calls to get my clutch and my flywheel. And I need a chunk of one inch hose here. I'm replacing this. That looks like shit. And I got to go back in the parts room. I think that's half inch hose. Let me go see if I got some of that. I'm just trying to think out loud here, guys. So I've got a new rear seal right here. I'm going to put that in. Um, pilot bearing, so that was a 6306 pilot bearing, or 6305, I think. Um, clutch brake, file resurface, clutch, uh, engine oil, and an oil filter. I thought I had an oil filter, but I don't. So, let me get on the phone here. Alright, well, the only damn guy that knows anything at Fleet Pride is not there right now. I keep wondering, what the hell are you guys going to do in there when he's not around no more? Are you just going to close the store, or...? I don't get it, man. I do not get it.
torque specs 32 foot pounds, but I might just go over them a little bit tighter because I've had trouble with these things coming loose on me. I might go about 40 foot pounds. <clears throat> I have had trouble with them coming loose. So I'll go 32. go to 40. Start in the center. But I'll tell you what, when I took them out, they weren't no 32 foot pounds, man. They were tighter than shit. Quite a bit on that one bolt there. Wow, that's kind of kind of odd, huh? How much I'm getting on the bottom ones, and the top ones aren't doing that. Huh. Extension on that one. I'm gonna go over all these bottom ones again. Kind of weird how much how much more I got on them bottom ones is kind of funny. A little bit. Just kind of prelude that turbo. Take some oil in the inlet here and then we'll take the blower nozzle and just kind of get it spinning. happening here on the impeller end when I do this. Okay, I got oil coming out the drain. Feels really, really good. Turbo feels really good. Okay. All right, now, now what's going on? Okay, let's put this up because I know what'll happen. Warren will kick it over, make a big old mess because the cap's off the damn thing. In the heat of battle, things will happen. Okay. Oh, not ready. Oh, I'm going to have to turn all this shit. Okay. You know what? Let's just put a bolt on there. We won't tighten it up yet. Everything's got to be clocked different. On this one. Mm 
get just tight enough to where I can where's the 15 at Yeah, the impeller, the bearing cartridge, everything's got to be turned on it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it with it on here, but at least maybe I'll just pull one bolt up on it for now and kind of... It's amazing the difference between applications on the same kind of engine, really. It's just all the minute differences and stuff they may have to do to... And, and I know, I know when I went into it, because you know all the retrofit stuff that I do. I knew it was going to be like this. So, basically the bearing cartridge. So if I turn, the impeller has to turn. So we got to loosen, on. well the impeller, we can loosen this. The bearing cartridge. I think what we can do with the bearing cartridge is just loosen these. I don't think we need to loosen. No, that's not going to do anything there. That's stationary. This is part here. Okay, hopefully it turns. Let's just kind of get right on the cast iron part of this. To see if we can really. like that. That's not good. That is not good. That is not good at all. He is stuck. Stuck bigger than shit. Might be putting another turbo on there, you know what? another turbo on here I don't think this one's gonna turn I think it's stuck I did not want to use that other turbo again fucking shit falling off everywhere So we're gonna have to use that other turbo. That really, really sucks ass. To be completely honest with you, that really, really, really sucks. I mean, it's stuck bigger than shit. It is really, really stuck in there.
see this turbo has been, you know, a little wet around the impeller housing. I don't like that. So I just, I called uh, and ordered another turbo. I don't want to sit there and be down with the turbo that's gone out. And uh, we're going to go ahead and put this one on. I can change that in the, in the truck. That's not that big of a deal. I'm done with everything except for the wife has got the flywheel in there to... Uh, one machine shop it's getting resurfaced right now and fleet pride had the clutch the clutch brake and pilot bearing and I got the engine oil and the oil filter I got a new fuel filter on it already over here um, anyway so I gotta run out. I got a little JX90 pulling a small baler that won't run. I'm just gonna grab a bunch of in wrenches. I'll grab my wrench pliers and socket set, 3/8 socket set, and I'll go out there. Let's see that JX90. I don't even know if that's electronic or not. I guess I'll take my laptop. Not real familiar with that little tractor, but uh, go out there and just see what if I can. Maybe it's something stupid. Anyway. Oh, you know what? I guess while I'm sitting here looking at this thing, I could put this wire back on the alternator. So I don't forget that. What size is that? That looks like that's going to work out just fine right there get my old girl going again well we're cranking on her a little bit here but I need to bleed a little bit more I'm afraid my starter is gonna give up on me too because I'll tell you what happened that junky piece of shit NAFA ignition switch that I put in there it sticks into the start position. And so it stuck, and I didn't realize it. I was in the field working one day, and... And that wonderful piece of shit stuck on me. And I smelled something burning, and I thought, hmm. Then I got a little further at my voltmeter, and it's way drawn down, and... Then I realized what was going on and shut it off and let it cool down and I need to get another starter. I should have just got one. That's what I should have done. I don't have the exhaust hooked up yet, so if it does fire, it's going to be noisy. Um, I had a little fuel out of that one, a little bit out of that one. Let's, uh, I don't have the throttle linkage figured out yet, so... I was trying to get fuel across most of those. Okay, is there any fuel coming out of them other ones? Hey, there is smoke there. That is a very positive development. I got fuel out of pretty much all of these here. Oh, it, it's probably worth tightening these up. I didn't crack the front one and the back one, but I don't know if I'm going to have to or... I don't know yet. That's a good sign, though, that we got fuel. And that there's smoke. I don't know what it's going to do when it runs. And I looked up to the bottom. And I looked in the oil pan and everything else. And everything looked pretty damn good there. From the bottom end anyway. Well. I don't have any throttle. So all it'll do if it does run. It'll just idle. That's it.
pressure. Come on. Show me signs of life. Ah, oil pressure. I like that. Seventy pounds. It's a frickin' starter hanging up. What's leaking back there? Oh, the return line. Yeah, I don't have a return line hooked up yet. I guess we ought to do that. But it runs. That's very good news. Yeah, I'm liking that it runs. That's very good news. Yeah. What do you think about that, folks? That it runs. And it's got oil pressure, too. I mean, that's that's pretty cool. I like oil pressure. I don't like this starter dragging and shit on me, but... That is the way stuff is supposed to start and stuff is supposed to run. So what I did is I had a pigtail. Yeah, pretty good return flow coming out there. I had a pigtail off of another uh I had a pigtail off another fuel shut off solenoid that I cut. And then I could just plug it in, that way I didn't have to cannibalize my harness, and I just ran. You know, you're going to have a, a key on, on those those types of fuel shut off solenoids. You're going to have a key on with power, then you're going to have a, you're going to have a, 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 a pull in, a hole in, and a ground. Okay, so I'm actually on the, the pull in wire, which is key on. This is the hold in, when you're going on the start position. Well, see, I might have that all screwed up, I don't remember tonight, but, uh. This might be the pull-in. This is the hold-in when it's actually in run. This is the ground. So my crane and everything, this whole board up here is powered from this wires they got here. So I need to tie in to that because that's where they used to be. That's how they had it tied in there. And I'm just pretty stoked, man, that it runs. So I have no dipstick. Um, there's a plat. well... Maybe it's still out here on the forklift. Yeah. And both of them, both blocks broke, so I ordered one from Cummins. But I couldn't get them out. They're serrated to where they grab in that hole in the block, and you can't get them out. I mean, you got to beat them out of there. So it's kind of like a male male nipple type deal. Because the other end's still in the dipstick tube, wherever it is. Um, anyway. So i got to get a hold of my lovely significant half. And have her bring some me. I want to put ELC coolant in this. Extended life coolant. I'm going to have her grab some of that. And bring it here. I might kind of gauge that. Find that dipstick. And at least I could get it close and shove the stick down in the hole. See what my oil looks like. Okay, guys. Well, what a disaster we got going on in here. Well, <laughs> there's some house diesel treat. I dumped that in there. So here's the deal. Here's some power service cetane boost injector cleaner and performance improver. So here's the deal. Uh got it fired up and it idled fine that wasn't a problem at all but it just was about half throttle and above i mean just fall on its face just absolutely fall on its face biller black smoke 
acted like about it was running on half the cylinders and i thought son of a bitch i know what's going on that fuel set in there because this thing i bought this engine let's see here i bought this engine in like oh must have been like oh five oh six and then i started it like right when i got it on the floor in the shop i used to work at and that must have been in like 05 or 06 and then it sat in in that shop and then i moved over here and it sat here ever since so i knew i knew what the problem was i said the fuels the pumps gummed up and the injectors are gummed up fuel gets all lacquered in there and i was right almost at the point i dumped all that shit in there and i was sitting here running it and my wife was standing here she brought this stuff down to me and i was like man honey I, this ain't looking good we might be pulling this injection pump and pulling all them injectors out might be going through that pump and might be putting new injectors in it which i'm putting new injectors in it anyway but she finally let's see if it don't make a liar out of me but she finally cleared up Listen to it, it just, just lights right off. I love these 12 valve Cummins. There's no blow by. Let me find a light. There's a blow by. There's none. Absolutely none. I'm extremely happy right now. <laughs> this thing runs like a top. What do we got for oil pressure now that it's good and hot? Got a little better oil pressure than my old engine did. My old engine was about 20 PSI at 180 degrees. This one's about 30 PSI about 10 pounds more oil pressure so now the next thing we got to contend with all i really got left to do is zip tie a few things up of course the hood but i need to do the air conditioner the biggest thing is is i have no throttle this is the same right here so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start scavenging around here right now and I'm just going to come back like this. I'm going to build a bracket because I've already got two. I've got two nuts here. I'm going to build a bracket out of some, oh, some angle iron or something. And then I'm going to just basically drill a hole for a bulkhead connector. I got to get kind of get it kind of back there to where it's right. And there you go. So, I guess I better get on the hunt for some for some metal to build that out of. But this thing always had green antifreeze in it, and I put ELC red extended life coolant back in it. Um, yeah, man, I'm really happy. <laughs> hey guys, I tell you, I'm kind of happy about this whole situation. Yeah, I'm I'm liking it. So, um. Now, uh, I already did it, but I ordered 40-horse uh, injectors from Oregon Fuel Injection. And uh, they should be here tomorrow, but I'm, I probably won't put them in for a couple of days. But I wanted to... I didn't want to put those new injectors in right now anyway. I mean, I got jobs to do. I got to get the hood on. This thing's got to go in the field tomorrow. But I didn't want to put those injectors in there before I got 
the fuel system to where it was working correctly. I didn't want a bunch of that lacquered up shit going right through my new injectors and screwing something up. That's what I was worried about. But uh, so far, there's not a damn leak anywhere on it because that other thing was slimy. Look at this thing. And what was leaking mostly was that front crankshaft seal. And I, and I know why it was leaking. It's because of all the crankcase pressure. It had tremendous blow-by. It really did. It, it, this is, if you guys don't remember, I was coming down Stevens Pass there and a couple years ago, and I had the exhaust brake on. And the valve stem seals must be leaking so bad on this thing that what happened is when I had the exhaust brake on, I was coasting down the hill with the exhaust brake on. I don't even know why I was using it because it never... It never did anything because the compression was so bad and the uh it wouldn't hold it back but anyway my oil pressure i looked down there i'm doing like you know 2100 2200 rpm and usually my oil pressure at that rpm was right around 50 55 psi i looked down there and it's at 20. i said what the hell and that's a mechanical pressure gauge you know with a hose on it and i was like oh shit so i, I slipped it into neutral and I watched the thing go to zero. Oh, shit. So I slammed her back in gear to get the RPMs back up on it. And uh, coasted down to the bottom of the hill there. And there was a gravel pit. And I just coasted in there. And, and it, had, it had blown this cam follower gasket right out the side here. So, of course, it's dark, you know. And I had a gallon of oil in the truck. And I took a screwdriver and worked the seal back in. And I got it all back in there. And I drove on into Chiloquin, Oregon there, and they got a, oh, what the hell, they had a Dollar General in there. So I got into Dollar General, and all they had was automotive oil, like 5W20 or whatever it was. And I bought a bunch of that and dumped it in there and got on home and changed the oil on it. But then I just never used the exhaust brake again. Because, you know, I knew it was not going to help. But what was going on, all that crankcase pressure, what it does, it, crankcase pressure like that just shoves all the... Well, you can see part of the seal right there. It's shoving the seals out of it because there's so much crankcase pressure. But you know what? It really didn't start that bad when it was cold. It was it was getting worse, you know. In the winter time, when it was cold, it would get worse, and you'd have to uh, run the intake heater quite a bit. But uh, anyway, so yeah, this thing I'm pretty happy here right now. Uh, well, she sure just runs good. Runs really good. And I'm so happy that it cleared up. I thought, man, this is going to cost me another two or three days. I mean, that sucker just lights off just like nothing. See what kind of smoke's coming out of the stack here. That was another thing that thing did. Sitting there in the wintertime, it, you couldn't have, you had to open the doors. You couldn't run it. It doesn't look like it smokes near as bad. Hard to say. I mean, I can't really tell if there's any at all coming out of there. folks i figured you guys would like to see this thing running properly so a lot of people have been asking me and, and my wife agrees with me uh i'm just gonna go ahead and start uh when i get time like yeah whenever i have any time to do anything but i'm gonna go ahead and get this one rebuilt i'll rebuild it but uh i'll get it inside here and we'll pull the head off and see what happened and we'll go through this through this engine here and have it ready to go and basically just the, the head and the base engine and then i'm just going to send the pump up there and have them go through the pump and have new injectors for this one too and uh and if i never use it i can i guarantee you with a 12 valve i wouldn't have any problem at all selling that thing i've had that engine that's in that truck right there right now was sitting in that frame rail right there because I was going to, that's the frame of the high boy I was going to put that engine in. 
and it was sitting there and I had everything capped off and plugged off on it where dirt can get in it but I, I don't know how many people drove by on this dirt road here and saw that coming sitting in that frame rail and, and stopped and said hey man I'll give you I'll give you three grand for that engine right now no nope nope I just turned everybody down nope 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 so I'm glad I didn't sell it because I'd have been screwed right now I'd have been down waiting for machine work and shit like that on that because that I guarantee you when I drained the oil on that engine sitting here I knew it was a piston because it was just glitter coming out of there because remember when I got that thing the front cover was cracked and and uh, the cam was screwed up and I put a cam and a front cover on it and I put main bearings and rod bearings in it while I had it there so I know it's got good mains and rods and it's got a good cam it's got you know good front cover on it uh so it, it's it's got to be a piston piston come apart or something in it so anyway guys all right well upwards and onwards